All right, so we found our, the portrait, our exemplar portrait that we're trying to match. We're looking at the lighting. I've indicated where the strongest highlights are by outlining them and leaving them blank inside. He's got a highlight in each of his eyes. I've indicated where the strongest shadows are. And you see how it kind of carves up the shapes. And now what I need to indicate are where the midtones are. And midtones are where all the texture is. So there's a deep shadow right here with the cap, but then there's a lot of midtones. And I do that with hatching lines. So these are the midtones. And like when we talked about lighting a tennis ball and showing the fuzz, the midtones, like on the, the forehead right here, oh. and underneath and above the eyes, all of that's very heavily textured with mid-tone lighting. Okay. Not too bright, not too dark. And it kind of feathers in from the highlights. It goes across the, the bridge of the nose, those mid-tones, which is why I see those deep creases. And it's on the temples. What do you do to, hit the grid, to get the grid, the third? Oh, you simply use the crop tool uh -huh. to get the third lines, and then you hit return and it will show you those. So very important not just to look for where the highlights and the shadows are, but also where you want to get all the texture and indicate that with hatching lines. And his lips. Yeah. And his neck, all mid-tones. Okay, our third sketch is what we call a focus sketch. And this one's a little bit easier. And it depends on what your reference looks like. But just like you look for highlights and shadows, you want your focus sketch to indicate where is the, the depth of field. How much is in focus? Where does it start? Where does it stop? And as a photographer, you know that it's better to get more in focus than not enough in focus. And that in processing, we can always take away information. You can do that in Photoshop, you can do that in the darkroom, but you can't always, or you, you can never add in information that you don't get in the exposure. So I'm just quickly redrawing my format sketch. And now I'm going to indicate the areas of focus. And I have all of these in the example online as well. My format sketch, my focus sketch. But this reminds me, there's a little bit more we have to do with our lighting sketch but we'll get there in just a second, and that will really help you with your shooting. So with the focus sketch, we're going to use the same sort of um, vocabulary, but what we're going to do is use the circled area to show what's in clearest focus. So his eyes, that is the depth of field. That's what's in sharpest focus. So that means in focus, in tight, sharp focus. And then what's slightly out of focus is going to be the hatched lines. That's what we call transitional. It's transitioning from what's in focus. And his nose is transitioned. It's a little out of focus because it's in front of the eyes. Even his forehead is a little bit in transition. His lips are in focus, though, because they're on the same plane as his eyes. And his chin, like all of that's in focus. His neck, though, is slightly in transition. As is his ear. And then the back of his hat and his shoulder, all of that is very much out of focus. It's blurred. You don't see the texture very clearly. 
and even the tip, the very, very tip of his nose is black. So I know it's a weird looking image, but this tells me what I need to know about what's in focus, what's transitioning from the focus area, and what's out of focus. So I can plan how to get that with my aperture settings and with my zoom. Okay, so what I'm missing from the lighting sketch now is very important for when I actually try to take these shots. I have to figure out what is the direction of the light and what is the intensity and how many light sources do I need and these are all tough questions. Give myself a little bit more room to do that. So from where the highlights are, they're all on the side and a little bit to the front. So his light source is fairly close like this. Now it's slightly angled, so it's slightly in front of him. It's not pure side light. And we know that because we get a, a lot of light in the eye and on the cheekbone as well. So this is where what's called the key light is coming from, this direction. And it's hitting all those areas. And the intensity of that light is very strong. I don't think there are any other light sources. So this is 100% of the light for the shot is coming from this one light source. But you might find that you have a secondary light source or reflected light coming on the other side. This portrait has no reflected light, nothing coming from this side at all. And that's why the shadows go to pure black. The other thing is, is the light diffused or is it direct? And this is definitely going to be diffused. So I can put a diffuser there and I can make the lines wavy to show that it's diffused light, but very strong light at a, held up close to the face, but diffused so that we get all that texture. Even in the highlights, you're not losing any visual information. So I would call that 100% diffused light from this direction. And when I shoot, I would try to match that. And what's perfect for matching this kind of thing would be a window with reflected light kind of coming through and diffused. And then on the background, you want to have your, I'm going to have my subject stand away from the background so that the light isn't hitting the same back, the background the same way it's hitting the face. And then I'm going to set my focus to be a very open aperture so that I have a small depth of field of only a few, um, like maybe a, a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to focus on the eyes so that hopefully I'm focusing past the nose and by the time I get back to the ear, the focus is pulled away. Now, this is what's interesting. This is a square picture, but my camera's format, and this is something else you can do that's helpful, my camera's format is more like this. It's a longer rectangle. So what I need to do is make sure I shoot my picture with enough space to crop down to the format I'm trying to match. So it wouldn't make sense for me to take a picture like this with my camera, where the eye is here and here and the nose here, right? There's no way I can make, make that match this composition. So instead, I'm going to turn my camera to portrait format, and I'm going to try to shoot the square within that portrait format so that I can crop down to it to get my finished photo. So give yourself plenty of room in your viewfinder to crop down to your desired format. Can it be like... Okay, so that is your first tip, is you are trying to get enough of your exposure to capture the format that you're trying to match, but make sure you get more than you need. So that, then you can crop down to the right image. Okay, so what we did right now, we grabbed this picture, we're just practicing our sketching. Is that what it is? We are, we are using this picture and then we are sketching it to understand how we will shoot it. Okay. Yeah, so, so now I know when I set this up, this is how I want to do the lighting. This is how I want to set my aperture. Uh, using portrait, portrait mode in your cameras is a good way to have your aperture fairly open, especially with a point and shoot. 
Sometimes if it's a shot like this, I might even try macro mode because I might be have the lens fairly close to my subject. Generally, when you're shooting a person and you want them to look like they really look, this one doesn't quite do that. You want to zoom in about halfway. That's another tip. You don't want to be all the way zoomed in. You don't want to be all the way zoomed out. This one is quite zoomed in, and so I'm going to match that. But when you zoom in a lot, it kind of spreads the face out. And that's what gives us this image, where the eyes look kind of smaller and the face looks a little broader. And that gives you more play with the focus as well, like we saw with our intentional focus exercise. All right. And then next class, what we'll do is we'll take the exposures and we'll put them onto the computer. And we hope that they match our sketches. But what our sketches then do is they help us process our exposures to make them even stronger. Because photography is always two steps. You get the best exposure you can with the most uh, adaptable and plentiful information. And then you make creative choices with that information to get your finished photo. And that will be where we start with the next demo, actually having exposures.